Today, I'm going to talk about the current state of the used RV market, and it's not pretty at all. Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. They call me the honey badger because I give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business. And it's March of 2024, and I feel like this is a very important, informative video that everyone needs to hear, whether you're a buyer, a seller, or a dealership, okay? So I want to start with a few explanations. Let me give you a little bit of context, okay? So context number one is there are, just like with KBB, there are two books when it comes to the RV uh, world, the used RV world. So there's JD Power that's for free, and there's JD Power that dealers and banks pay for, okay? So there's what the pretend value is, and there's the lending value. Notice I made it rhyme. Now, what I don't mean literally pretend value, because at the end, you, you know, whatever somebody's willing to buy a unit for is what the perceived value is, okay? But what I mean by pretend value is there's a big difference between how lenders look at things and how a customer looks at things, whether you're a buyer or a seller, okay? The first thing is, is a lot of times we have the habit of clicking on every single option on JD Power or the old NADA guide to come up with a value or some kind of, some kind of MSRP or sticker price on a used RV of any kind, toy hauler, travel trailer, motorhome, etc. Okay. Now, there's a small percentage of lenders out there that will allow you to do that, but they are few and far between. Usually the terms and the interest rates are not exactly favorable towards the buyer. Okay. But the super majority of lenders credit unions, banks, etc., use the wholesale book value, okay? Now, how that works is when I print out a book sheet, it has a used wholesale and an average retail. Now, banks, most lenders, do not allow us to add the options at all. So how they determine options is not anything more than they allow us a percentage on top of the wholesale book. And what that means is, the most common is, is if the wholesale book on your RV was, let's say, $10,000, they usually will allow us to add 10% on top for any what they call allowable ads. So that means that they would base that value on $11,000. Now, you might have added up all the options that came out to like fifteen dollars but that's not how the lender looks at it, okay? Then what the lender does is usually gives you gives the customer between 110 and 120% of that money to be able to give a value or what they will lend on value, okay? So basically what that means is if, let's use that same course, $11,000. So if we take $11,000 and we times it by 1.20, one second here. We're not editing this. We're just doing this at the hip. And I'm waiting for my calculator on my laptop. Here we go. So if we take $11,000 in the same example, let's say the max, you have really good credit, 1.20. That means they're going to land roughly $13,200 on that RV. Okay, so I've ran into this, and this is why I'm using this example. So I ran into a situation where I took a travel trailer in trade in November of 2023, so roughly about five months ago, and the wholesale book value was $15,000. So I paid the guy sixteen five dollars because it actually was in really good shape, and I thought I could sell for around $19,000. I thought I could turn around and make a quick two grand, dollars $2,500, and move on. Well... We didn't get a lot of hits because families are usually doing a lot of other things during the holidays. But we finally have started getting some folks in and we finally had like five people that wanted to buy it this month. But I couldn't sell for 19 grand anymore because I would need six or seven thousand dollars down to sell it for 19 grand plus tax. So I had to lower it down to 14.5 and I ended up taking a two thousand dollar loss. 
Now, this is something that's going to be very common with a lot of dealerships out there, especially if they own their used trade-ins in cash, like my boss owns ours. So I'm not one to worry about profit in that respect. That's more about cash flow, and that's normal. But if you're a customer and you owe 20 grand on that particular trailer, it's going to be hard for you to sell it without coming out with some cash out of pocket. Now, I know I'm not going to get... I'm not gonna be everybody's favorite person in this video. In fact, I'll probably lose subscribers, I'll probably lose viewers, and I understand. I'm here to just give you the truth, okay? And the truth of the matter is, is it is gonna get harder to get what you owe <clears throat> on your current RV because of the fact that the lending book has dropped. Now, remember what I've been saying for almost three years, okay? That the difference figure between what dealers were selling new for and what your trade-in value was hadn't changed since early 2021 until this month. So if you want to be realistic, it has been exactly almost three years since the COVID, or sorry, almost four years since the COVID lockdowns. Okay, so just think about that. So in almost three and a half years, the difference figure never really changed. And this is what I mean by that. Let's say you were out buying a $100,000 RV of any kind, toy hauler, motorhome, etc. okay? Back in 2021, and your trade-in value was 70,000. That means the difference figure, $30,000, right? Okay, let's say last year that they now sell that new one for 70 grand, which dropped your value down to let's say $40,000. The difference figure is still what? $30,000. Now that has begun to separate. And that's not a pretty picture for a lot of people. Okay. Uh, now, how can, now the question is, how can I get out of it? How, how, what are my options? Well, option number one would be is I would start making massive payments. If you're somebody that owes, let's say you're $20,000, $25,000 upside down wholesale in a motorhome or a toy hauler or whatever it may be, I would start looking at options of paying down your loan faster. Maybe put an extra couple hundred dollars if you can every month towards the loan while you try to sell it. Okay, this will very much help you out. Uh, the other thing I would say is um, find out from your local credit union what they would lend on it. You know, one of the biggest things you could do is go down to your local credit union and say, I want to know what you would lend on this motorhome. And a lot of times they'll help you out. They'll be very communicative with you. Say, look, I'm putting up for sale. I want to be able to give you guys some business and send somebody down here. What would you be willing to lend on my motorhome? or on my toy hauler, et cetera, because what that's gonna do is give you a frame of mind. Now, let's say they allow you to click on a lot of the options on the retail side of the wholesale book, that's an advantage for you, and you know where to send people if they're financing your RV. Because remember this, guys, I know that everybody trashes me and tell me, just pay cash, just pay cash, just pay cash. If everybody paid cash for an RV, there would be no RV industry. 70 and now the number 78 percent of rv purchases are through rv financing then you have another sort that's like i think they said 16 percent is now um uh some kind of non-traditional financing like borrowing from 401k borrowing from house you know taking out a personal loan etc only about 4 to 7% of the population of the United States and Canada can afford to actually write an actual check and a cash to buy an RV. So are we only supposed to sell RVs to people in the top 4 or 5% income bracket? No, we're not. This is supposed to be something for everybody. Just like a car. Nobody is going to be ahead in a car a car loses value and loses value quickly, okay? So just think about those things as you're going on. If you guys have any questions, you know, you can always ask me in the comments section or you can email me or contact me on social media. 
And if you want more information on how RV lending works on older used RVs, make sure you click on that video right there.